madness is this? Me? Mike DeZorch actually making scripted content? This is pure insanity! But, yes, I have been taking some time to consider what new content I could bring to the channel. At the moment, all I've got is the Professor Adventures, and I haven't been all that consistent getting those out. So, I've been working on new ideas, and this video is one of them, but I don't want to tread on old ground. Basically, there are plenty of channels that cover gaming news, and lately none of it has been good. Good things are happening in the gaming space, but most news outlets focus on the bad. I'd like to change that by reporting on good things that happen in gaming rather than all the things that just make me even more depressed. Speaking of which, I've got good news today. Well, good if you're not a Sony pony. Otherwise, this news is going to make you throw a fit, and then Fratanga will put out a video mocking you. Watching the console war spiral into flaming wreckage has been entertaining, to say the least, but moving on. Anyone who knows me or watches this channel knows I'm a big nerd for VR, so this is very welcome news. On their official blog, Sony said, We're pleased to share that we are currently testing the ability for PS VR 2 players to access additional games on PC to offer even more game variety in addition to the PlayStation 5 VR 2 titles available through PS5. We hope to make this support available in 2024, so stay tuned for more updates. Sales-wise, for PSVR 2, it hasn't been all that great. It isn't that there aren't any good games for PSVR 2, but not everyone has a PS5. This is a problem that Sony hasn't been able to overcome. Specs-wise, PSVR 2 isn't too shabby when compared to the Valve Index. The Index uses LCDs at 1440p per eye, while the PSVR 2 uses OLEDs, like the HTC Vive, at a, at a resolution of 2000 by 2040 per eye. The Index has a wider field of view at 130 degrees, which is only 20 degrees more than the PSVR 2, and both support up to 120 Hz refresh rates. It is the OLED that makes the difference, though. In dark scenes in games like Half-Life Alex, you can see the backlight bleed through on the Index's LCDs. OLEDs offer those deep true blacks that LCDs, even with lots of local dimming zones, just can't compete with. Another feature is haptic feedback. HTC's wands and the Index controllers both have support, though games don't often use it. PSVR 2 has haptic feedback on both the controllers and on the headset itself. An interesting feature to have, though as I said, it isn't used very often. When talking audio though, the Valve Index has everyone else beat. Their speakers sit off the ear and provide incredible virtual surround sound. Tiger has an index and the sound quality is fantastic. PSVR 2 uses earbuds, which plug into the headset. Sony is no slouch when it comes to audio, so the earbuds that shoot with the headset sound decent. They still don't hold a candle to the Index's audio, though. If earbuds aren't your thing, you can use any headphones if you want. Simply plug them into the headset's 3.5mm audio jack. This does mean having yet another thing on your head that will move independently of the headset when you move your head around. A lot. In most VR games, this will happen, frequently. Tracking-wise, Valve and HTC's headsets are still the reigning kings. They use SteamVR's lighthouse tracking, an outside-in method where wall-mounted base stations project IR lasers into the room that are detected by sensors on the headset and controllers. PSVR 2 uses inside-out tracking, similar to Meta's Quest headsets and Windows Mixed Reality, though it is a vast improvement 
over the janky tracking used by the original PlayStation VR. Sony's tracking quality is comparable to the Quest headsets, and as inside-out tracking goes, Meta's tech has become the gold standard. This includes full room-scale VR support, which the PSVR 2 will likely achieve via a tracking app of some kind. Lastly, Sony's headset has a feature usually only found on headsets over $1,000, eye tracking. On the PS5, this is used for foveated rendering. Basically, what your eye is looking at gets rendered at a higher resolution than everything else to improve performance. There are VR games and apps on PC that take advantage of eye tracking, and at $549, the PSVR 2 is a bit more expensive than the Quest 3, but nearly half the price of the Valve Index and significantly lower than the Vive Pro. Windows Mixed Reality headsets are much cheaper, but the PSVR 2's features make it a superior offer, and Microsoft seems to have given up on WMR. Connectivity-wise, the PSVR 2 would plug into a PC via USB-C, the same way the Quest 2 and 3 connect to PC to play Steam VR games. If Sony wants this to go anywhere, they will need to make their headset Steam VR compatible. Since Steam VR is a open standard, this should not be difficult for Sony to accomplish. As I said, I expect Sony will need to make a tracking app, which turns on the headset displays, connects to the controllers via Bluetooth, and translates the tracking data into something Steam VR understands. This isn't too difficult from how Windows Mixed Reality works. The entire process of setting this up for the user should be pretty easy if Sony writes good software. This app will likely present the user with a virtual space similar to Windows Mixed Reality Home or Steam VR Home. Overall, this decision is a good thing. Consumers get a decent new headset option that's still somewhat affordable, which can access two completely different libraries of games, assuming you own the required hardware, but then you wouldn't be buying one if you didn't. So what do you think? Do you like this new format? I mean, this whole idea of focusing on positive news rather than the negative and me writing a script? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for interesting news to share in the Gamers Bay community, so I shouldn't run out of things to cover. Also, I'm exploring ideas for other content. I've been thinking of getting back into streaming. There are games I've been wanting to get into, like Helldivers 2, Enshrouded, Lethal Company, etc. I will keep you posted on what's going on with the channel over on X. You'll find a link to my profile there in the video description, as well as my link to my profile on MeWe. Thanks for watching. I've been Mike DeZorch. Until next time, think positive and have fun gaming.